Welcome back, everyone. Another week of Taurus Tech Talk here at SG Taurus. I'm your host, Matt LePan. Last week, we talked proper duct insulation practices with Mark Gunther. This week, Mark is back and he's talking proper line set insulation practices for all of your jobs out there. Mark, first, thank you for coming on and discussing ductwork last week and line sets this week. We're looking forward to the conversation. Not a problem, Matt. This is uh, part of the job where it's usually the last part you do and probably the most important. Everyone who's out there and has worked in the field for a while knows that you know line sets aren't necessarily something that seems all that hard to run and to do properly, but there are a lot of steps that folks can miss. Mark's been out in the field. He has been working out in the field for years. He's probably installed more line sets than he can even remember. So, Mark, what are some of the tips and tricks you have for proper line set installation? Well, first of all, slow down. Seems like whenever you're rushing for something, a uh, line gets kinked and you don't notice it, or insulation gets ripped and then you have a little water ratio. You slow down and make sure you do, do the proper refrigeration techniques and you won't have a problem. And job usually comes out right. You do it once and you won't have to go back on it. You know, there are a couple of tips that you want to use. You want to never mix refrigerants, which is a kind of number one automatic rule. If you are going to use switch refrigerants, you want to flush the system really thoroughly to make sure there's none of that extra uh, refrigerant from the old system left in it. It's an easy way to ruin a compressor. And uh, that's very inexpensive in the long run. When you do stuff like that. Yeah, and Mark and I have actually had a discussion on this uh, formerly on Taurus Tech Talk. So check out the podcast notes. We're going to link to the podcast on properly flushing out your lines if you're changing over to a uh, new refrigerant. So make sure to check that out in the podcast notes. Best practice is to replace the line set. I mean, that's the best practice. Sometimes it's in the wall. I know it's odd. Uh, and or sometimes cost is preventative, but you really have to spend the time to flush it correctly. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem down the line. Make sure you use nitrogen when you do embracing. Nitrogen creates an oxidation inside the line set. And if you don't force that out, you're going to have a problem later in your filters or your strainers in the Mitsubishi system. So make sure you use just trickle the nitrogen in as you're brazing, and you won't have a problem. Make sure your insulation is unripped, and it's all the way to the end of your pipe. That's really key. A lot of times you get water situations on ceilings or uh, someplace where you don't want it inside the home, and that's usually related to a piece of insulation got ripped or removed from the piping. Make sure you triple evacuate. A key problem with poor installation is the fact that they didn't pressurize the system long enough and they didn't evacuate long enough and their contaminants were in the line and therefore the system doesn't run right. So that part of the job, slow down, triple evacuate, and you won't have a problem. And then lastly, use proper pipe supports. The reason why you're getting a lot of vibration and noise on a system sometimes is the fact that the the piping for the uh, system starts vibrating and hitting against something and you end up with a lot of noise. Good proper supports with supports that are of like metal and you won't have a problem. All the installation manuals state the size uh, for different lengths that you can run your line set at. Uh, a lot of these systems nowadays allow for different size line sets. So if you just follow the installation manual for different units, you'll be fine with uh, switching sizes as long as they meet their, they've been well tested. So they have, they know what works with the system. So just check your installation manual and you'll know what you can use, whether it's a uh, five eighths or three quarter or inch and an eight. It'll stay clearly for the length that you have and the number of elbows and vertical height of what you can use for that system. And like Mark said at the beginning, you know, for the folks with experience, this isn't really a hard process. It's one you've probably done a million times, but 
you just need to take a deep breath, slow down. We know this is probably at the end of your project, so you're looking to wrap up and get out of there, but make sure you're doing that triple evacuation. Make sure you are really checking through, make sure there are no kinks, there are no rips in your insulation or anything like that, and make sure everything is hung up properly because if you have leaks or vibration or anything like that in a brand new system, your customer is not going to be happy. And at the end of the day, we're all here to make your customers happy. Make sure you get that good, you know, the five-star Google review when you leave the house for your company. Then you're going to have a happy owner as well. So make sure you're, you know, taking that deep breath, slowing down, doing this properly, and following Mark's tips for the proper line set installation practices. If you do that again, you're going to have happy homeowners and happy owners back at your job. We want to thank Mark for coming on. I want to thank all of you out there for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora. If you can find a podcast, really, you can find us. Just search Taurus Tech Talk. Follow along on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Find our pages at SG Taurus or use the hashtag Taurus Tech Talk. And you can catch all of our podcasts right on our website, sgtaurus.com backslash podcast. I want to thank you again for tuning in. We'll see you next week on Taurus Tech Talk.